Hello and welcome to another episode of Literary Gladiators, the show where we discuss and debate literature in all of its forms. If it's written work, it's game. Let's meet the panel. Hi, I'm Larry. Hi, I'm Jesse. I'm Tori. And I'm Josh. And uh, today we are going to be going over one, uh, the old, the the female writer that is pretty much the oldest uh, known and recorded uh, female writer in uh, world literature uh, in Sappho. Uh, unfortunately, back in uh, that time period, a lot of uh, writing, and particular writing from female writers, was destroyed. And with, uh, with Sappho, in many cases, there are just fragments of her works that yeah. remain. Uh, this one in particular, I think, would be, would be interesting uh, uh, food for thought. Uh, and uh, this particular poem that we're going to be going over is Behind a Laurel Tree. And the discussion starter that I have for this particular poem is... How would you describe the relationship between the speaker and her subject? Do you believe her subject is another woman? Yes. Possibly. I felt like the whole poem was unfinished. Yeah, there was I was, there was a good chance it was. I'm quite unsure if I even had the right poem. But I think at the same time, I think that with what we have, I think that I, I agree with Tori that you have. I think that there's enough to detect that a Sappho was talking about another woman. I would say that it was not. I cannot affirm that she was a lesbian. Uh, I think. I think if I was forced into a corner uh, and forced to pick, uh, I would say that there was a good chance she well, was. She, she wrote prim primarily about women in a very romantic way, but she did write yeah. about men too. So there, yeah. there is both sides. But and she wrote about all subjects, which I think. Yeah, yeah I was gonna I, say it could be a child, it could be a man, it could be a woman, it could be an, a grandmother. I, I think it's pretty definitive. It, like it could be anybody, a woman. Citing yeah. citing this particular book, uh, Willis Barnstone actually says that uh, a lot of people back in that day uh, love poetry was for uh, subjects of the same gender. Even men would do the same. They would write. Uh, poems of admiration for other men, which it's an interesting uh, idea, because she wrote for her child the one time. But she, she's written for her child, and then she's written for men, but in many cases for women. Uh, there's so, a yearning in there. I know it's yeah. fragmental, but there's there's this, like, maybe not romantic yearning, but there is a, I'm looking to make that connection. You're very much like me. I found several different translations of this poem, even though it's like very snippety. Um, it doesn't seem like it's complete. Like I, it feels almost like there's pieces of it missing. But what I was able to discern from like the little bits and pieces that I was able to find is that it was like reaching out to somebody or a, like um, wanting to make a connection with this individual. Mm -hmm. I would, say, and I think it in a forbidden way too. I yes. see. I didn't get that way. like at all. I got, and maybe it's. Like, I was unaware that there were different translations, so maybe it's just the translation that I got. But she is laying behind a laurel tree, and she's barely noticing anybody. She's not looking for anybody. She's not yearning. She's, huh. And then, here you come. Oh, there you are. As if it's just like, uh-huh. There. I like, I was waiting for you, and now here you are. I think one and of like, the key words, though, <laughs> is behind. Mm -hmm. Not by a laurel tree. Under. It's behind. Not, it's behind, yeah. because... And even still, uh, this is an area where women are wandering, and I'm putting the pieces but together that they're wandering together. I feel like if together. she's yearning and waiting for somebody, you barely heard a dar I barely heard darling soul. Like, if I feel like if you're yearning and waiting for somebody, you're going to be waiting and listening and, like, being aware of the women wandering around you. I think one and, can still feel that sense of yearning silently. No, no, no. I didn't get it at all. Oh, I, I, got just, it I took a, that piece as, like, that person was light on their foot. 
Um, that I could barely hear, like, I barely heard your approach. Oh, uh, see, I see, took it as a, she's sitting, relaxing, daydreaming, and, oh, Well, yeah. that's because I said, like I said before, I, there was, like, two or three different versions of the poem that I found, so it, it yeah. had completely different words. It, it all depends the on the translation. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. And that's what I'm saying. It's like, like, I didn't three realize other there were... pieces of, there was three mm. other, like, there was extra parts to that sentence where it was, like, I barely, whatever the, uh, yeah, I was gonna say, that was, it sounded like a, I, I barely heard you coming, like, in a, like a, mm. Mm, see, so I didn't read that, so that. that's yeah. why I got something completely different based on the translation that I had, and I, and that in a way is gonna make something like this hard to mm -hmm. talk about because so many different translations, and you're never going to actually get the full force of what was meant to or by the author. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, like I didn't feel this being romantic at all. It's just. It's a sweet like, little bit of poetry, yeah, like and like there was really no lovely. Yeah, it's just a scrap. Yeah, like, just, yeah. It feels like it's incomplete. Is that like the person you said in this whole discussion. Yes. Yes. Yeah, okay, that's what I thought. <laughs> I don't care. But <laughs> I think though, I think that you, you guys are coming up with a good point. I think that. I think that's this can be taken. Can this can be taken for its face value and be enjoyed as well. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot that's also interesting to uh, decipher. Yeah, uh, because I, I did it. It does sound it, unfinished, not complete. It's a shame that it's unfinished yeah. because these works were destroyed. On, uh, these, I'm the kind of person that wants to see literature get contained and people's yeah, thoughts. Yeah, it should be, be preserved, contained. but unfortunately, because and, of who was writing it, yeah, it's lost to us. And especially time. since, like many other things that were yeah. written under women, mm -hmm. so. and or or people of yeah. minorities or that kind of mm -hmm. stuff. So. And I think that uh, I think that I mean. When we talk about uh, garnering uh, uh, a sense of diversity within literature, we have to be able to uh, pull back as far as possible and look at the, the people that contributed to literature in ancient times mm -hmm. as well. And I think that if it's that worth it, I mean, not just for its own sake. I think it's any good. I think it's nothing. Think <laughs> <laughs> this this I think is a bad example, but there are other things probably out there that would be it's able like to this support could have it. been something, yeah. maybe. I think but it presented a, an interesting. As it image. is, you're right. It's not. Yeah, I think that the uh, the idea, the the different uh, approaches that can fatten the uh, the image of. Uh, I could I could imagine a, a nice day, uh, someone yeah, sitting sweet behind the world. Encapsulation yeah. of like a nice moment. That's, mm -hmm. Yeah. Other interesting word uh, was uh, the use of the word garments, which I don't know if m male clothing has ever been garments. Garment. Uh, it was. Yeah, uh, garments is just whatever. Yeah. It's clothing. Beautiful yeah. in your garments. And that's why I was like, I wasn't sure if it would be about a woman or not because, uh, like, there are many instances in, um, and I can't, of course, think of any examples at the moment, but there are instances where women have referred to a man as beautiful or his mm -hmm. garments as beautiful or um like a woman has been referred to as handsome yes so that, it's that like was, I, I feel like this could one. literally be about yeah, I guess anyone so. i guess um, so yeah you're right it's like it yeah women, gender, women it might could be, just be the translation yes. tr the, whoever translated it translated that word to beautiful mm. yeah mm -hmm. okay i mean the beautiful part i think could be uh, applied to any which one, but yeah. I think that when you put everything together, I think, uh, in my mind, uh, she's writing about a woman mm -hmm. as the finished product. Yeah, so I just think she's writing about someone. Uh, yep. You could do. You could look at it that way too, mm -hmm. because if you just want to enjoy it for its face value, I think that you can apply it. So this kind of like, yeah. and maybe this is like the. Uh, Rom romanticism in me that I enjoy in those lovely like girly movies where it's like somebody's just sitting there waiting and what like literally what I pictured is just somebody sitting there like la 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 and then there you are in the beautiful garments and it's like that sunshine and you never really actually see who it is and then it ends and like that's what I pictured yes, it's just like a spaces, lovely yeah. little moment where it's like mm. I'm sitting and waiting and daydreaming and having a nice day and oh what a surprise you're here I feel like and like that's probably it. something better we could have chosen it from this, but I didn't think it was bad. I just mm. it felt unfinished and just mm. that it's yeah. there. Like it wasn't bad. It wasn't good. It I, wasn't think it was, really I think it was. I think it was. I thought it was a 
I thought it was a decent poem for I enjoyed it. Mm-hmm. And for what it's worth. Mm-hmm. I like I enjoyed it, but I didn't feel like I'm not going to go around going, "You must read this poem." It is unfinished and beautiful. You must read it. Like, no, mm-hmm. it's just like, oh, I'm glad I read it. It gave me, like, a cute little, like, tiny little quick story in, or film in my head. And it was nice. And that's mm-hmm. that. Could have been about anybody, is it? Yeah. Like, just, it was there. It's nothing. <laughs> it's a scrap. We know how it was you lost to history. It. Yeah, but it should have stayed that way. Somebody picked up this burnt piece of paper. Oh, let's save this. It's unfortunate because yeah. we don't know if there was anything meaningful or more to it. That yeah, the rest it could have been just passed over. But maybe there was something in there at one point in time that made it feel like somebody needed to, to hold on to it, mm-hmm. which is unfortunate. I think that's mm-hmm. the worst part of it. Is like mm-hmm. what, it, what is, is something if there was more, here? it was lost. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, you look at, like, uh, well, we gotta make do it what we have. the pre-Socratic uh, philosophers. Their their works are all lost to history, too. But we do have a lot. And all you got left are scraps. And you look at them, and you can kind of, you know, there's more of it. You can cohesively kind of put it together. Don't even. I know. That's such a heartbreaking moment. Make the best of what we have, and then do our best to see what we can find. Exactly. Don't cry about it. Already. Let's see what we can find. Never mind. Do we have any final thoughts? No, about this little uh, cotton candy moment. Yeah. yeah. I like that term, cotton candy. It's yeah, sweet it's and lovely and, and short quick. and yep. gone. Mm-hmm. How old is it? 5,000 year old cotton candy? It's before Listen, the common you know, era. <laughs> I mean, already then. If you're it's interested, kind of <laughs> if you're interested in checking out uh, this and uh, Sappho's other poems, uh, this is the entirety of her collection that is remaining. And I think that it is just great that this piece of history uh, uh, remains with us and uh, in the world of literature. Be sure to join us next time for another episode of Literary Gladiators. For now, keep reading. Bye-bye. <laughs>